sugar as an industry globally is worth $67 billion. A lot of people are investing a whole lot of money into knowing how much sugar to put in your ketchup, in your bread. If you are someone who has these huge dreams and ambitions and these goals to change your life and to change your stars, to make more money, to retire your mother early, to push yourself to your limit, to live life and achieve all these things, but you just can't seem to get it. You can't seem to start one. You have all these amazing ideas, but you just can't mm, get started. Or perhaps you've already started and you're stuck somewhere. You're stuck earning a certain amount of money and you are just struggling to get to the next level. Then you're not dumb. You're not stupid. You're certainly not lacking strategy. More than likely, you're very highly distracted and you have some really bad habits that we need to get rid of. In this video, I'm going to be giving you five of my top tips to help you get your life back on track. Obviously, from the title of this video, you know that dopamine is involved. You've probably seen videos actually where people have been talking about the dopamine detox. And as a physio, I feel like I should give you a tiny, tiny little explanation about what dopamine is and what it does. People really focus on dopamine as like the happy drug and we need to get rid of dopamine. But dopamine has so many benefits. So I'm going to very lightly touch on that. I'm going to tell you what dopamine is I'm going to very, very, very lightly touch on the benefits and functions of dopamine. I'm going to give you my five top tips to help you get rid of your dirty, bad habits that are stopping you from achieving your goals. And make sure you stay till the very end because the last one is juicy. It is literally my entire life revolves around the very last tip. And I'm not joking. It's not clickbait. It's just something that nobody talks about, but is super, super, super duper important. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So if you've never heard of dopamine before, dopamine is a neurotransmitter. Think about it as a messenger between the brain and the nervous system. It's made in the brain and it helps send information from the brain to the nerves and pretty much the rest of the body. That way your brain can coordinate and regulate movement. This is a huge responsibility and a very important role. However, most people limit dopamine to just being the feel good hormone. And this is where dopamine gets a bad name. It's all to do with the reward system. Admittedly, this goes back to evolutionary days. So as human beings, we are internally designed to perform behaviors that mean we get rewarded. This is how it works. When you're doing something pleasurable, it means that your brain releases a huge amount of dopamine and then you essentially feel good and so you want more, so you do it even more. And that's where the cycle begins and that's how, of course, people can get addicted to things like food, drugs, alcohol, and a lot of other things, even exercise, simply because your brain considers all of these things pleasurable. But dopamine is actually involved in a lot more than just pleasure. And this is the bit that people fail to mention, partly because not most people know. Dopamine is involved in movement, cognition, lactation, breastfeeding. There's so much more that it does. It's not just about being the feel good hormone that requires pleasure because by limiting it to that essentially what's happening is people are saying we are so woke we don't want too much dopamine and it's like no 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 dopamine does other amazing things as well like I said at the beginning of this video there's so many videos on dopamine detox you know people are doing it for like seven days or whatever they're just cutting everything out the intention with this video is to let you know that dopamine is definitely not the devil the habits themselves are actually the problem. It's the person, the lack of control, the bad habits. These are the problems that you're facing. However, working on the five things I'm about to mention, you will feel a lot more focused, a lot more connected to yourself, a lot more present. And most importantly, we're going to shed those terrible bad habits and help you build some new ones that will hopefully help you achieve those goals that you've been struggling to achieve. So let's get into it.
So here are five top things that you can start doing today to help you change your habits and start building a brand new life. Feel free to do these for seven days, like a lot of people recommend, 21 days if you like, however it pleases you. But these are things that some of them you can start reintroducing into your life as time goes on. You don't have to just be like cold turkey, especially because the first one I'm starting with is no porn none. I don't, can I say that on YouTube? No P word, no 18 plus content, cut it out of your life. And what I mean by that as well is especially the video. So if you think about it nowadays, these videos are just so available to everyone, just readily available. You can watch them anonymously. And there's something about watching a video that makes you feel like you are literally in the you're in that room with that person. Like you are, you are there, you're, you're going through the process and scientists are now suggesting that this is really rewiring our brain. So we are, we're, we're at that point where we are now acting accordingly. You know, our thoughts, our uh, sexual experiences are very much driven by what we see, which is all fiction really, because that's not how the real world works. So what I would say is, you know, a lot of people watch P word to pleasure themselves. I'm not saying don't do that. I'm all for pleasuring yourself. Please go ahead and do it. Like a lot of miracles happen when you do that. I genuinely mean that. I feel like it's a, it can be a really spiritual experience. It's a time for you to get to know yourself and your body. It's definitely nothing to be ashamed of, especially for, for women. And in my experience, I feel like it's very, very liberating. I definitely think that you should pleasure yourself if you wanted to, but use your imagination. Visualize your own scenario, like how you genuinely want to be treated if you are in an intimate relationship. Try and get to know your body for what it is. But if you were going cold turkey, then just don't do it at all. Like you could literally just stay away for like seven days, 21 days, whatever. But if you're like me and you can't completely go cold turkey, just don't watch the pee videos. <laughs> just don't. That's not real life. You're changing your brain. You're literally acting accordingly. The sad thing about it, I find, is that when you are watching a video and you are so focused on being in that video, feeling the feelings that you think you should be feeling or, or whatever it is. Um, the saddest thing about it is once the video ends, you're still there. You know, you're back to your reality. And then what happens is you want to find something else because you're now on a high. You want to find something else to keep you on that high, to maintain that high. And then you watch another video and another video and another video. But once you are done, because you will eventually be done, once you are done, you are now depressed. You have to come down from this high. You know, it's it's so sad. It's empty. There's no one there to give you a cuddle. There's no one there to, you know, make you feel special and, and vice versa. Instead, it's just you and probably a towel, whatever. And it's just, it's sad when there, there's so many people in the world that you can connect to. So this is the very first thing that I would definitely say you need to stop doing. It's a bad habit. It's drawing you in into this fake world. It's stealing your attention, really stealing your focus. And it doesn't even lead to anything. It's not like it's educational. It's not like you're going to, you know, when you get into a relationship, it makes your relationship better. And no, it actually makes it worse because if you can access videos like that all the time, any time of the day, the reality is you're not going to be interested in a relationship. And by the time you get to the point where you're like, I really want a relationship, everyone's moved on, people have grown <laughs> and you've been there the whole time watching the P videos. So that would be my number one tip. It's a terrible, dirty habit. Let it go. Use your imagination if you must or completely go cold turkey for seven days or 21 days, whatever you need. Reconnect with yourself and other people too. Go to bars, go and talk to people in bars, you know, go and see people in real life, you know, get away from the screens, go and see people in real actual life.
Tip number two, exercise for at least 20 minutes a day. Oh my goodness. Obviously I'm a physio, so I'm going to throw that one in there. But the reality about exercise is it's so good for you. It's an activity that when you do, your body would naturally release dopamine. It's not only beneficial, it's essential. We are built for movement. If you think about our ancestors, they didn't have cars, they didn't have planes, they had to walk for miles, for days, for sometimes months even, you know, these guys had to walk for safety, they had to keep moving around, they had to walk for shelter, they had to walk to find water, to find food. Do you think they had arthritis and <laughs> back pain and <laughs> and sciatica? No, they were using their bodies exactly how their bodies are meant to be used. So I have a virtual clinic, by the way, if you guys didn't know, I own a business called The London Physio. So it's thelondonphysio.co.uk little plug there. You can basically book appointments in online. I see clients who live around the world. We all have the same problem. We're all on our phones all day, just looking at stuff. You know, we're all sitting in terrible postures. We're all doing the same thing and we're just not moving enough. And even when we move, we catch flights or we drive, or sometimes we just don't move. We're just couch potatoes. Like your body needs the movement. And the beautiful thing about movement is is you don't have to do it all in one go. So personally, I recommend minimum 20 minutes a day, but that could be five minutes, four times a day. You could literally just go up down the stairs, walk around the block, do some squats, do a, a, a short workout on YouTube, cool, whatever it is. But remember that exercise is essential. Your body needs it to release synovial fluid from the joints. And basically think about that as an engine oil. If a car didn't have its engine oil, it just wouldn't run properly, period. Your body needs that in the joints in order to lubricate the joints and in order to enable the joints to move better and, and, and a lot easier. And of course, it's great for your mood, helps you lift. If you're depressed, oh my goodness, if you're depressed, try exercising. I can definitely testify to that. So 20 minutes of exercise, it's actually not a long time. That's two 10 minute sessions of whatever you want, whatever you want. There you have your natural dopamine being released into your system. Are you somebody who enjoys looking after your body? If you didn't already know, through the London Physio, my very own brand, I have now released some fitness products that are practical. If you're somebody that travels and someone who loves working out at the gym or you love working out at home and you love using your own products, then these will definitely be for you. We have all sorts from double-sided gym mats, to foam rollers, to massage balls, to resistance bands, the long ones, the short ones, the looped ones, the glutes bands, weighted skipping ropes, we have them all. So if you are someone who really enjoys looking after your body and you enjoy having lightweight products that you can take with you wherever you are, then these will definitely be for you. I initially created these when I moved my physiotherapy practice online after COVID and I was working remotely, seeing my clients and I really wanted them to have something to work out with. So I created them. But of course, it's actually really beneficial to have products like these that you can use anywhere, anytime, whether or not you have an injury. Prehab is a big thing. Nobody's waiting till they have injuries anymore people are starting to look after their bodies way before they have an injury much to my excitement as a physiotherapist so if you want to get your hands on any of our products my link tree link is linktr.ee forward slash joy agude that's j-o-y October Golf Umbrella Delta Echo, where you'll find all the links to each and every product. I hope you enjoy using them. And if you do, don't forget to leave us a review. Tip number three is limit what your devices can do. Nowadays, obviously everyone has a, a cell phone. Even a nine-year-old has a cell phone. Not only mobile phones, we have iPads, we have laptops, we have computers. Everyone has at least two devices. And that wouldn't even be like an exaggeration. I have a phone, a MacBook Pro, 
an iMac. I don't have an iPad because that's just overkill. But there are people with all the devices. There's some people with two mobile phones. You really need to limit what your phone is capable of doing, what your devices really are. Think about them as a window to the world. You have all this information at your fingertips. There's nothing you couldn't Google. There's nothing you couldn't search. And on top of that, you're getting all these notifications, like just so many notifications. It's mind blowing. Sometimes I put my phone on DND, which is another thing I'm going to mention. I actually look at my notifications bar by the end of the evening and I'm like, oh my goodness, the number of notifications I've received. And when I'm with my friends, there are people who like literally every single time anyone posts anything on Instagram, they get a notification. They haven't even posted it to them. It's not like a direct message. It's just someone posted. And immediately it's like, looking at the phone and I'm just like, no, you cannot do that. Just because you have a device does not mean you should be available. Let me tell you what it does. It distracts you. There are people paying millions and billions to literally get your attention. Everybody knows now, right? If you are on any sort of platform, social media, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, any platform that you are not paying for, there's a reason for it. You are the one that's being paid for. (laughs) You are literally the one that's being paid for. Specifically, your attention is what they're paying for. They want you on that app 24-7. Reason being, Mark can literally say we have 20 billion Facebook users. So you as a, as as an advertiser, you can come and advertise on Facebook. So I'm going to charge you 20 million. (laughs) And I'm sure there are people, there are companies that will pay that because that is very normal to do. Because if they can get your attention, they can understand how you buy, when you buy, what time you buy, what seasons you buy, the things you buy, how you mix. Listen, They want to understand that so they know how to sell to you. This is the reason why you Google something or you talk about something and then all of a sudden you get all of these like adverts coming. Everybody knows that. Come on. There's, you know, when you just have like a chat with your friend and then suddenly you're like, oh my God, I can see like all of these adverts. That's because brands need that. They need that data because they need to know what you're looking for. They need to know what to sell to you. They need to know when to sell it to you. They need your attention. That's literally what your phone, your laptop, your iPad, because it's these are all individuals now. It's not just about families. It's all about your behavior and all of that's being tracked 100%. Even when you download an app, you have to agree to terms and conditions. Do you ever read it? No, <laughs> it's there. That's where it is. So by limiting what your phones are able to do, these are the tips that I'll give you within that. One of the things that I do is put my phone on DND. So I'm a new Apple user in terms of the fact that I've always had an Apple laptop and iMac, but I never really used an Apple phone. I was always against Apple phones for years. I was always a an Android girl. So recently I turned to Apple and there are a few things that you can do on Apple. So I'll tell you. So number one is that you can select different screen savers. Within the screen savers, you can customize them to be on focus and a certain type of focus. And it's really easy. All you need to do is go to your lock screen, press and hold. It comes up with your different screen savers if you've saved them already. And then before you select them, it at the bottom, it literally says focus. So I have a particular screensaver that is always focused. And the second thing I do with that screensaver is that I hide all of my apps on my, on my uh, phone uh, homepage. So right now, for example, you can't see this. Let me see if you can see. You can't see it. Can you see that? That is okay. I'll have to show you separately, but that is my my homepage. I have nothing on it. All of my apps are hitting nothing, 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 nothing. And for about eight hours a day, I'm on DND. Nobody can disturb me, period. And then the other thing I do within that is that I also put my widget on for activity, screen activity. One, when you look at that, you're like, oh my goodness, I have spent five hours on Instagram today and I've spent seven hours on TikTok today. And that is no exaggeration. If you 
to track your activity, it will shame you into realizing how much time and focus that you're placing in the wrong places when you could be working on your dreams. So definitely start limiting what you can do with your devices. The last tip I'm gonna give you within this is that when you're working on one device, preferably your laptop, um, because it's a lot harder to kind of use your laptop. You can't make phone calls and things like that. Whereas you can use like web WhatsApp on your laptop and just shut it down. And once you shut it down, you don't get notifications. So preferably on your laptop, but when you're working on your laptop, just have one tab. Do not be that person that has 10,000 tabs. <laughs> I am guilty. And do you know what? Sometimes I look at my computer and I shut everything down, everything, everything down and just keep one tab open. So when you're opening a new page, don't open in a new tab. Click on the exact thing you're clicking on and open that page period. Spend time working on your dreams. Don't spend time on your on your devices. You are too distracted. Number four is watch your intake. So I've grouped this one because it's not just intake in terms of food. It's actually, you know, alcohol, drugs, everything that goes into your body, basically refined sugar, snacks, junk food, all of that. Just watch your intake. I can't tell you what to eat. Nobody should be telling you what to eat except for a qualified dietitian. As a general tip, alcohol should have no place in your body. Smoking should have no place in your body. Drugs should have no place in your body. And I'm not saying you should do this for the rest of your life because everyone has different reasons why they do them. But if you're thinking about a detox, you really need to start thinking about cutting down. And in terms of detox, I would really be thinking like 90% for, and not just this, but a lot of different things. If you haven't been exercising, you know, add exercise into your your week 90% of the time. So if you can't stop smoking altogether, maybe cut down 90%. It's a detox for a reason to help you reset and help your body just get back to feeling like itself again. So that from there, you can actually make an informed decision about how best to move forward. Before I finish this point, I just want to quickly talk about some of the figures that I found on um, Google. Sugar as an industry globally is worth $67 billion. And this is, these are figures from 2021. It's estimated to reach 76.6, which is pretty much $77 billion in 2027. What? $10 billion (laughs) in the next four years. $10 $10 billion. The sugar industry, we're talking about sugar alone. We're not even talking about drugs. We're not talking about smoking. We're not talking about alcohol. What this really means is that a lot of people are investing a whole lot of money into knowing how much sugar to put in your ketchup, in your bread, in your, what else is there sugar in? Like your pasta sauce. These are everyday things that people don't realize there's a lot of sugar in. Even your milk has sugar your milk has sugar. Can you imagine? Your actual milk, low-fat yogurt has sugar. So these are things that are everyday things, let alone when you start eating like biscuits, you know, like sugary biscuits, sugary cereals. Um, What else do people eat that obviously has sugar, you know? And it's crazy that we're probably already addicted to sugar. We just don't realize it. So if you're going to be cutting things out in terms of your intake, think about sugar, think about alcohol, think about smoking, think about everything that goes into your body. And let me tell you, I did detox from negative people too. I did detox negativity on a daily basis. In fact, I repel it. I repel it so badly. I just can't be around people who are negative. So when I when I even think about what goes into my body, not just physically, but mentally, visually, energetically, <laughs> detox the hell out of that because whatever goes in is going to be processed inside of here. 
and you don't want it inside <laughs> if it ain't good for you. <laughs> so detox people too. I definitely recommend that. And just so as not to leave you hanging on that, obviously you can replace your food with, I actually really like high fat food. Um, I It makes me full. So actually when I eat things like um, cheese or uh, I don't eat cheese very much because to be honest I'm trying to cut down dairy I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a huge fan of dairy I just like certain yogurts but I tend to eat sometimes I tend to have mozzarella in my uh, in my omelet and it's really nice and it actually keeps me super full like a small amount of food and it keeps me super full whereas when I have meats proteins and and carbs which are obviously really good for you I can eat for days but when I honestly when I eat fats I'm good and you can get you know really good fats in avocado um, fish and stuff like that so if you're gonna if you're gonna stop something and you're gonna limit your intake just make sure you're, you're replacing it with something that would be beneficial to your body Finally, here is tip number five. Now, I promised you that tip number five is one that a lot of people don't talk about, and it is the daddy of all tips, and I wasn't joking. The reason why I'm giving you this tip is because a lot of people talk about a morning routine, but not many people talk about a nighttime routine. Get a nighttime routine. It is a game changer. Now, obviously, there's so many books on like a morning routine, the miracle morning, the 10 minute morning, or the high five more. I don't know. I don't know all the names, but nobody ever talks about a nighttime routine. Now, I genuinely believe that your day starts when you go to bed. It doesn't start when you wake up. It starts when you go to bed because firstly, one day just ended. You're going to sleep. You're going to recover. You're going to get your energy back. You're going to start afresh. And I don't want to scare you if you're not spiritual, but there's a lot that happens when you sleep. So how you go to sleep really matters. For me, I like to have a really nice stretch. This is my routine at the moment. I put the heating on. So my room is like a freaking sauna. I like a, <laughs> I like a hot room when I'm doing my stretches because I stretch in my underwear. If you didn't know, the London Physio has physical products now. I'll put the link in in the dis in the description box here you have all these products on amazon so you can buy them they're so good like super premium products i literally like just have my the london physio mat out and i have a really nice stretch and it's so good and i literally foam roll as well and it's so nice because during the day obviously we're sitting like this whether it's driving or uh, typing or whatever it is we're doing, but our hands are in front of us, obviously. So we're constantly sitting like this. And so I really open up on my foam roller. It's so good. Like if you could hear the noises I make just when I'm stretching, oh Jesus, because I literally love, love stretching so much. I stretch everything from my glutes. I foam roll. I even use our massage balls as, oh my goodness, like just so freaking good. But the other thing that I do before I go to bed is I meditate. I wind down. I set the scene. I light a candle. I plan as well for the next day. I journal. I, and it might look different every night, you know, but I have a few things that I do that I just decide which one I'm doing. The one thing I never miss is the stretching. The second thing I never miss is planning for the next day. And if I ever do miss it, my next day is ruined. If I wake up and I I don't have a plan. Bye bye. Because it also means that my morning routine is out out the window. If before you go to bed, you put your your gym clothes to the side, you set your alarm, you decide exactly what time you go into the gym, you decide exactly what you're doing at the gym, or if you're working out from home, I work out from home a lot. We have a lot of resistance bands and workout equipment. So I actually do a lot of my workouts at home. But either way, if you don't plan it before you go to bed, if you're like me, say bye-bye to the day. Like that's it. That We're just winging the day. That's what we're doing. So having a nighttime routine is such, such a game changer. Please get a nighttime routine. Thank you so much for watching this video. Remember that dopamine is not the enemy. We're really not trying to get rid of dopamine. So the whole detox thing is not a lie, but is kind of false you know it's it's not explained properly and also just remember that not everyone has a 
medical background, although that nowadays that doesn't really matter in that people can Google stuff. But what I'm saying is don't take advice from someone who Googled it because Google ain't a doctor. So make sure you do your own research. And on top of that, just realize that dopamine gets, a, you know, it's it's just being tainted. <laughs> but dopamine is good for movement. Dopamine is good for sleep. Dopamine is good for cognition, for behavior, for a lot of beautiful things like breastfeeding and you know they just it's dopamine is not a bad thing so you don't want to detox from that you just want to break those bad habits that are keeping you stuck and I certainly hope this video has helped in a massive way if you've enjoyed the video then please give it a thumbs up please subscribe to my youtube channel I would really appreciate that and I will see you in the next video bye guys